Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at an Astrotech AT80 EDT. It's an 80mm f6 apochromatic triplet ED refractor. Now I've been getting a lot of requests to review this thing, so let's take a look and see how it performs. Okay, so we have a nice lockable aluminum flight case here. Wish more telescope manufacturers would just give us that as standard. And Mike, the guy who bought this, said the worst part about this telescope is the foam is very tight. And it is. But let me tell you something. If tight foam is the worst thing you can find to say about a telescope, that's probably good news, especially coming from a guy like Mike. He is our resident refractor lover. Now, I don't know how much of this is coming across on camera, but this thing is just gorgeous. Everybody who has come in here has remarked about this. This is a really nice powder coated finish here. Fit and finish just really outstanding. It comes with a set of rings and the plate. And there's a little bushing on the knob to make sure that you don't go metal on metal, a nice touch also. These are very well machined. Holes drilled on the top if you want to put a finder or an auto guider or whatever you like on the top. We get a sliding dew shield, a dew cap, and lens with nice deep dark coatings, 80 millimeter F6. It is a triplet and there are at least two baffles that I can see down there. You also get a two-speed focuser. It is graded here. A fine focus is quite nice. And you also get, and this may not be obvious, this actually is a rotating focuser. You may not notice that at first. A couple of different philosophies on rotating focusers. Each has their fans. Some of them just like what happens after the visual back to rotate. Others, like the Astrophysics Stowaway, which has a feather touch on it, the entire visual back rotates some people like that. I actually kind of like this a little bit better because if the whole visual back rotates, the focuser rotates, and if the finder shoe is on here, that rotates as well. And sometimes you have trouble finding things in the dark. So really, it's, it's checking off all the boxes. I mean, you're getting a lot for your money. Many manufacturers will just give you an optical tube at this price, but you're getting almost everything you need to get started. The rings, the plate, this two-speed focuser is very often an option with an expensive telescope, as is the rotating part of the focuser. Try pricing the camera angle adjuster on a Takahashi, you know, and, uh, and of course you get the case. So uh, really, you're getting a lot for your money and you can almost get going right here. But if you're a beginner, you do want to know that you're going to have to supply the rest of this. That is the finder itself, the diagonal, any eyepieces you want to use, and of course, the all-important mount. So, you know, I've had this discussion with people before. You can almost tell country of origin just by looking at the telescope. In other words, each nation seems to have its own design aesthetic. Look at enough telescopes, you can probably guess where the thing was made. So at the top here we have Takahashi Sky 90, made in Japan, Astrophysics Stowaway, Teleview 85, Made in USA, William Optics, Megres 90, Taiwan, and the Astrotech, made in China. Now, if you notice, the Americans and the Japanese seem to be the least interested in impressing you. Those are actually quite plain looking. The Chinese scope is the opposite. It wants you to notice it. Now, I don't have a Russian telescope here, but if I did, trust me, those things are instantly recognizable, even from a distance. The optical tube weighs six and a half pounds by itself, fully loaded here with the rings, the plate, the finder, the diagonal, inch and a quarter adapter, and an 18.2 millimeter D-Lite eyepiece. It weighs just over eight pounds. Starting to get up there a little bit, but still an easy load for a mid-size mount like the Celestron AVX. Now with 480 millimeters of focal length to work with, it is an ideal telescope for low power, wide field sweeping of the Milky Way. And even if you don't know what you're doing, just pointing it up and sweeping around 
can be a lot of fun. If you want to look at the planets, and you are going to want to with a good refractor, you're going to need more power. Unfortunately, with only 480 millimeters of focal length to work with, we do have to wind up using one of these, and my favorite, the Teleview 2.5X PowerMate. Now, longtime viewers of this channel know I am constantly cautioning beginners against indiscriminate use of the Barlow, but again, with such a small focal length, we've got to resort to these things to extend it and raise the magnification. Now, on Jupiter, I found that the 2.5X PowerMate, in combination with the 11mm Nagler, proved to be a very good combination for viewing most of the time. I did have one exceptional night of viewing where I was able to use the 7mm Nagler, as opposed to the 11, with the 2.5X PowerMate, had 170 power. You need a good night around here to be able to use that, and I don't even think I would go much higher than that, even under ideal circumstances. But again, with a really good night, see lots of cloud bands, see the red spot coming across, and also watching shadow transits, that's a lot of fun. The little moons of Jupiter cast black dots across the surface of the planet, and you can sort of watch those move along as the evening goes by. So, you know, one evening I was out here looking all by myself, and a car pulled up behind me. People piled out, entire family came out and said, what are you doing? Is there anything special going on tonight? They always ask that, don't they? They always want to know if there's something special going on. And I said, no, I'm just kind of goofing off. And I must have spent the next hour showing them things up in the night sky, including Jupiter and all of these deep sky objects. They had a great time, thanked me, left, and I never even got their names. So I do want to point out that it is winter time and you only have 80 millimeters of aperture here. And it's easy to convince yourself in a time like this that 80 millimeters is enough. But I do want to point out that there are so many big, bright objects out here in the winter time that you can sort of fool yourself into thinking, well, I don't need anything more than 80 millimeters. But if we were doing this review in April where there's nothing to look at but lots of dim galaxies, eh, you might have a slightly different opinion. And of course, I wound up taking some images through this thing. Here is a picture of my imaging rig. You've seen much of this stuff before. That's the Hutech modded EOS 5D Mark III, the Teleview Field Flattener, SBIG STI Auto Guider, the AVX mount, and an old cheap laptop running PHD2. Images were processed in PixInsight. Okay, so when you see these reviews of mine and I'm showing you astrophotos as a very general rule of thumb. If you see me showing lots of images, which is what I'm doing right here, it's usually a good sign. It's a sign that the telescope was easy to work with, and not all of them are. In fact, when I get a new telescope, very often the first one or two or sometimes even three evenings are sacrificial to me. It just takes a while to get used to the new system. But this one, right off the bat, no problem. I got images right away and I was satisfied with the quality of them. Wow, I really like that horsehead nebula. But anyway, as a very general rule of thumb, the more images you see, the easier the telescope is to work with. Here's an image of IC405 and you can just start to see the top of IC410. Those are both in Auriga. And here's an image of IC410 by itself. Okay, so again, I do get lots of questions about this model, and it's largely from upgraders. <laughs> that is, people who have something like an Orion ED80 or the smaller Astrotech AT72 or its clones. Is this better? Yes, it's better. It's better optically. Especially it's better optically than that AT72. I haven't been all that impressed with the optics on those that I've seen, but that's okay given the price that they sell those things for. I don't really know that we can complain. But optically it's better, and mechanically it's better, much more so than the Orion ED80 class of telescope. Now, is it worth it? <laughs> That's not the kind of thing that I can tell you. That's an individual decision, but I can tell you it is better than those scopes, and it should be based on the amount of money that they sell these things for. So other than that, I'm not really finding much to say here. I mean, uh, for the price they sell this thing for, it wasn't that long ago. No way could you get this kind of performance for that kind of money. 
The only thing I might be able to say is I haven't seen a lot of these. I hope they're all like this one. I've owned a lot of AstroTech telescopes and I've seen lots of them. The quality control seems to be pretty good. So there you have it. A look at the AstroTech AT80 EDT apochromatic refractor in an 80 millimeter aperture. I hope this review has helped you to decide if this telescope is right for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.